Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. So, till now we have been seeing non-cooperative game theory. Now we will switch our focus to cooperative aspects. First we start with uh, one of the fundamental concept in non-cooperative game theory which has the cooperative aspects to it. So, this is uh, known as correlated equilibrium. So, first we will we'll start this correlated equilibrium concept with some examples. So, we consider the following example which is known as battle of sexes. So, let the payoff matrix is given in the following way. There are uh, two players one wants to go to movie and other wants to go to uh, let us say dance program. So, the payoffs are given this way. Okay. If both of them uh, go together then they, they have a positive utility and if they go to different places there is no utility. So, this is a, is a, it's a coordination game in fact we have seen this earlier. So, let us look at this game and as uh, we noticed earlier this game has a two pure Nash equilibrium. So, they are given by M M both choosing M M is a pure Nash equilibrium and both choosing D D also pure Nash. So, these are the pure Nash equilibrium. Apart from this there is also a mixed Nash equilibrium in the mixed Nash equilibrium. So, the game actually they play 2 by 3, 1 by 3 the player 1 plays uh, m with 2 by 3 probability d with probability 1 by 3 and uh, player 2 will play m with probability 1 by 3 and d with probability 2 by 3. So, this is a mixed Nash equilibrium one can verify easily. Okay. So, once we know this mixed Nash equilibrium now we would like to consider the other thing. So, in M M the Nash payoffs the payoffs that they receive are 2 and 1 and in D D 1 comma 2 the player 1 receives 1 and player 2 receives 2. In the mixed Nash equilibrium we can see that they will receive 2 by 3 each. Both of them each is this is the payoff vector. These are payoff vectors. Now, we would like to consider another uh, kind of a strategy uh, where there is a third party so we would like to call this as a trusted so with both the people will trust. So, the third party who advises the following thing. following. So, in this uh, what he does is that he said he, he will toss a coin this is observed by both players. Okay. Now, so he will tell the people separately Okay. So, what is this if when if coin lands heads then they should choose M M. If tails come they should choose D. Okay. The, the third party advises them that uh, based on this commonly observed random variable which is the tossing a coin if the outcome of that is heads both of them should play M if the outcome is tails they should play D. Okay. Of course, they do not know what the other play is play. 
Okay, fine. Now this is basically this strategy depends on a common randomness, and in fact, uh, it is not like a mixed equilibria mixed strategies that we have seen earlier. This is a joint strategy. So, so now under uh, one, if they are following this strategy, so we can uh, see that. with the half probability they will get 2 with half probability 1 and in the other player will get a half probability with half probability 1 and a half probability 2. So, therefore, they can see that the players get 3 by 2, 3 by 2. Okay. So, this is a, this payoffs are higher than the mixed Nash payoffs 2 by 3 2 by 3 in the mixed Nash they are getting 2 by 3 each but whereas in under this uh, joint strategy which is known as a correlated strategy they are getting 3 by 2 and 3 by 2 which is higher than this one. In fact, uh, if we really see it carefully this the total payoff that they are receiving here is 3 and which is same as what they receive in any of the deterministic Nash equilibrium. In fact, uh, one would like to point out here is that once this strategy if the players know that both the players are following his this third party advice they have no incentive to deviate. Okay, because they know that the other player is going to stick to this one. So, therefore, uh, this advice they will not deviate and in fact, this is actually known as a correlated equilibrium. So, we will see one more equilibrium and then uh, one more example and then we will see it. So, we consider the following game. So, the game is the following thing. So, the, strat, uh, the payoffs are given by 3, 3. 0, 5, 5, 0, minus 4, minus 4, there is a yield drive, yield drive. This is known as a game of chicken. Okay. So, in, in this game, what the game here is that there are two people who are driving on their cars and they come to an intersection point in a different of course different direction. Now, they need to cross, okay? they need to take turns or whatever way. Now, if both of them drive try to cross they will hit each other and then they will incur a loss. So, therefore, the minus 4 minus 4 is basically if both of them drive then they will lose. Now, if one drives and other yields the one who is driving get a utility because he has reduced the time of waiting. So, he will get 5, the other person will get 0 because he has waited and so he missed it. But if both of them yield that means no, no, no one is uh, losing anything and then they have some incentive here and both of them will get 3 and 3. Okay. So, now this is the story of this uh, game of chicken and then um, in fact uh, the game has again 3 Nash equilibrium. And they are basically yd one yields and other uh, drives, and similarly the other person, one person, the first person drives and other person yields. This is uh, this thing, and then uh, the other uh, game, other other uh, this thing is two by three, one by three. That means with one third probability they are driving. This is the mixed Nash equilibrium. Okay, these are these two are uh, pure Nash equilibrium. Okay, so here what we're saying is that with one third probability both of them will drive, and with the remaining probability they yield. Okay, now let us look at it. What are the payoffs here? If in this uh, pure Nash equilibrium y d zero five, these are the Nash payoff vector, and in this case five zero. And here with two third they are yielding 
and then with one third they are uh, driving it. So therefore, if you calculate it, so the payoffs actually are going to be 2 and 2. In fact, this is a simple exercise to see that this is a mixed Nash equilibrium and this thing. Now let us, uh, how can a correlation be obtained here? So let us look at the following thing. Suppose we have a traffic light. which instructs the yield or drive that is assume uniform half probability half probability. Okay. So, uniformly it is suggesting whether they should yield or drive. Now, in fact, uh, under this what course when they say when I say instruct y and d what it means is that the player 1 is going to yield and the player 2 is going to drive and here the player 1 is going to drive and player 2 is going to yield. So basically among these two strategies the traffic light is randomizing it when, while one person yields the other person it is suggesting to drive. So this choosing this the person to drive is choosing with half probability. Now if we calculate the the payoffs it will be 2.5, 2.5 under this correlated strategy one will get it. In fact, once this is done there is no incentive for uh, people to deviate from this. So, this becomes a correlated equilibrium. So, let us look at another strategy. So, now here the random choose between now instead of 2 I am taking 2, 3 y d d y yield. Okay. So, there are 3 strategies, 3 choices and the randomization is between uh, these 3 and how you do it. Because when you are saying one of them is driving then these 2 should have a uniform probability. So, therefore, let us say th this yielding we keep it as a probability p and this will be 1 minus p by 2, this is 1 minus p by 2. Let us look at this one and I would like to choose p the best here, what is the best here? Let us look at this one. Now given that, uh, suppose given that a player is instructed to yield there are two possibilities one is uh, with probability p and other is with probability 1 minus p by 2 okay so when one person is uh, told about yielding what about the other player so the other player the player knows that the other player has been told to yield with conditional probability so we are looking at the probability the conditional probability that the other player is also told to yield so this is going to be let me call py this is nothing but p by p plus 1 minus p by 2. So, and they he is uh, told to drive with conditional probability let me call it as a p d that will be with 1 minus p by 2 by p plus 1 minus p by 2. Okay. Let me write it here 1 minus p by 2 by p plus 1 1 minus p by 2. So, this is basically the probability condition probability that is advised to drive. Now, therefore, the player's utility is going to be because with, with, with py probability the other guy is also yielding and then pd is driving it. So, therefore, the player's utility is going to be 3 py for yielding and then uh, 
phi p by minus 4 p d this is for the driving ok. So, this is going to be this one therefore, player will not deviate at the instruction as long as 3 p y is bigger than 5 p y minus 4 p d. If this inequality holds true then the player will not deviate from whatever he has been instructed basically that is this one ok. So, now this if we try to simplify it we have used already what is p y and what is p d put substitute these things here and then we can say that this is true if and only if p less than equals to half. So, one can calculate this uh, very easily it is not hard substitute the values of p y and p d and then you will get p to be smaller than half. Now, under this thing we now each player's utility of course, the same thing holds with the other player also uh, this is a symmetric game and a symmetric behavior happens. So, therefore, uh, now uh, the players each player's utility under this uh, correlated strategy is going to be 3 p plus 5 into 1 minus p by 2. So, this is the utility that they will get under the correlated strategy if with 1 minus p by 2 probability they are choosing y by d and with 1 minus p, prob p by 2 probability d y they are choosing p probability y y. Now, calculate the utility of utility that they are getting under the strategies for each player that is going to be 3 p plus 5 into 1 minus p by 2. Now, this is nothing but if we calculate this one ok. So, this is going to be minus 5 p by 2 that is 3 p. So, 6 p minus 5 p that is p by 2 plus 5 by 2 and then in fact, uh, if this utility will be maximized when p is equals to half therefore, at p is equals to half the utility is nothing but 2.75. So, therefore, under this correlated strategy the payoffs vector is 2.75, 2.75. So, both of them will get 2.75 each. In fact, as we already proved it as if p is less than post of no one is going to deviate from the instruction. So, therefore, this is also a correlated equilibrium. Once you suggest this correlated strategy, the players have no incentive to deviate from this correlated strategy. So, now here there is an interesting thing. Let us look at in the mixed equilibrium here, they are getting 2 and 2 and in the did pure Nash equilibrium y d 0 5 and 5 0 here. So, what they are really getting is higher the total payoff which is greater than in any Nash equilibrium. Okay. The players will get higher than any Nash equilibrium in this. So, this correlated equilibrium has several such interesting features. So, uh, the most important thing we would like to point out here is that the correlated equilibrium is a joint strategy. It, the players are not choosing their strategy independently. There is a some third party who is advising them what to play and that advice is through some common randomness ok. So, now let us formally define the correlated equilibrium. So, let us consider game G 
let us say we write everything for two players, but we can actually extend everything for multiplayer case. So, the player 1 strategy is set is S2, S1 and S2 and then their utilities are U1, U2. So, because we are considering only two players, so S1 is the strategy set of 1 and S2 is the strategy set of player 2 and we assume S1, S2 are finite. In other words, we are considering a bimatrix game. Okay. So, now what is a distribution? What correlated strategy? is nothing but a probability distribution mu on S1 cross S2. Basically S1 cross S2 is the possible strategies pairs that they can choose and then you are saying advising them both of them should choose same thing. Of course, they do not know what the other player is doing it they will be advised. So, such mu is a probability distribution on S1 cross S2. Now, what is a correlated equilibrium? it is said to be correlated equilibrium if the following happens for every i for every s i t i in s i. So, the following condition s minus i belongs to s minus i, s minus i is basically suppose if i is equals to 1 s minus i is s2 and s minus i this is nothing but s2. So, you are taking mu s minus i s i with probability s minus i and s i people are choosing this with prob this probability and then the i player will get s minus i s i this is the under this correlated strategy mu the player i gets this much. Suppose if the player i deviates from this, so instead of playing s i he plays t i. So, then what he will get is s minus i, s minus i, the player 2 is not deviating it. So, therefore, uh, th this will be simply s minus i mu s minus i s i, this is the probability with which this thing and but instead of uh, u i s minus i s i he will now get t i. This is the utility that player i will get because he is deviating from s i to t i. So, this is the utility that he will get by the difference. Now, this should be true. If this correlated payoff that he is getting under the correlated strategy mu is bigger than this quantity then I say that this mu is a correlated equilibrium. Now, this is something exactly like a Nash equilibrium, but in the Na the difference between the Nash equilibrium and correlated strategy is that in the Nash equilibrium people are choosing their strategies independently the same inequality similar looking inequality applies there also. But here the thing is that the strategy is a correlated strategy, it is a jointly chosen strategy in a way. Okay, jointly chosen through some randomness. So, that randomness is known to both the people, but they do not know what exactly the other player is choosing. Okay. So, the, such a strategy is called correlated equilibrium and in fact, in the previous examples whatever we have seen is that th those things we can show them that they are the correlated equilibrium with respect to this notion. Now, let us look at few interesting points here. So, what exactly is this? Uh, definition giving us. So, the thing is suppose if mu is one correlated equilibrium let us say nu is another correlated equilibrium then if you this inequalities with uh, these two inequalities with mu and nu will hold now it is not very hard to see that a convex combination of these correlated strategy which is also another correlated strategy. Okay. So, they also that co convex combination will also satisfies this inequality. So, in other words what I am saying is that there is a proposition I will put it if mu nu are two correlated equilibrium then 
epsilon mu plus 1 minus epsilon nu is also correlated equilibria for each epsilon in 0 1. So, this is not very hard because this follows from this inequality. In fact, the most important to note here is that this is linear in mu that is what exactly comes here. The, this is uh, that this means that set of correlated equilibria is convex. This is the main interesting consequence of this one. Then there is another thing, another proposition I can put it is if mu n or correlated equilibria and mu n converges to mu then mu is also a correlated equilibrium. So, here we are using the S1 and S2 are finite. So, therefore, this convergence becomes easy. If S1 and S2 are not finite, this convergence becomes little more technical, but nevertheless the result will be true, but we will not go into those details. So, this proof again follows from the same thing if mu n converges to mu, if this inequality is true with n's and the continuity of this, if mu n converges to mu, then the same inequality will hold true, it is straightforward comes from this uh, inequality. So, therefore, uh, this proposition is also true, this implies set of correlated equilibria is closed. And remember that set of correlated equilibria is a subset of the probability distributions on S1 cross S2 and S1 and S2 are finite. So, therefore, the set of uh, probability uh, the uh, distributions on S1 cross S2 is compact and hence this is also compact. Okay. So, therefore, under for the finite games the set of correlated equilibria is convex as well as compact. So, this is these are very useful results in uh, this thing. In fact, uh, there is another thing you can we can easily prove is that every Nash equilibrium is a correlated equilibrium. Again this is uh, not hard to prove it, I will leave it as an exercise. So, the most important thing to realize here is that a Nash equilibrium is also a correlated strategy, only thing is that the correlation is actually there is no really correlation, uh, it is just simply the joint uh, it is a joint distribution that becomes a product of the individual things okay, if you look at the, the densities and all. Okay. So, therefore, every Nash equilibrium is a correlated equilibrium. So, therefore, the set of correlated equilibrium is always is non empty. This is trivial from this proposition. Now, few points I would like to mention here is that can we prove the existence of correlated equilibrium without using the Nash equilibrium because Nash equilibrium requires a fixed point argument and set of correlated equilibrium the correlation these are defined by certain linear equation nice looking linear equation in uh, you should compare this with uh, the inequalities corresponding to the Nash equilibrium this is certainly much nicer than them. So, now uh, can we prove it? In fact, the answer to this is uh, true, we can prove it directly using zero sum games, the min max stand classical min max theorem, we can use it to prove this. It is done by Hart and Schmidler. So, I will not go into the proof of uh, this one. So, we will let us not worry about the proof now, it is not very hard. Now, another point before closing this session is that why this set of correlated equilibrium is interesting. Now, in the previous sessions we have seen certain learning algorithms for example, fictitious play, BNN dynamics and best response dynamics. These are a few of the things that we have seen it and we know that these dynamics need not converge to Nash equilibrium. But many of these uh, dynamics we can uh, we, under some reasonable assumptions we can show that they converge to a 
set of correlated equilibrium they converge to some correlated equilibrium but from there bringing to a Nash equilibrium is very hard and many a times it would not converge to Nash equilibrium but we can show that the limit point will always be in a correlated equilibrium. So in that sense this correlated uh, equilibrium is a very of a fundamental importance and uh, sometimes people say uh, this is as fundamental as Nash equilibrium. So these are two very important concepts. Uh, the, finally I would like to point out that even though correlated equilibrium concept is defined for the non-cooperative games this correlation is a cooperative aspect of the game. And uh, under certain assumptions we can show that the if the Nash equilibrium is unique the correlated equilibrium will also be unique but these are all much more technical and we will not discuss. There are also several interesting uh, geometry related aspects here where does the Nash equilibrium lie on the correlated polytope. So this is again an interesting question again uh, there are uh, some beautiful results available in the literature and uh, they are all more technical we will not discuss about them in this lecture. Okay, with this I will conclude this session and we will continue cooperative games in the next session. Thank you.